Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and well, we're going to work on another one of these Daiwas today. This is a Daiwa, it's a Saltist. It's the 30HA Level Wind LW. It's a 6.1 uh, to 1 gear ratio, which means it's high speed. You can usually tell those with the bump outs on the bottom of these round bait casters. This one is stuck. So we're not sure what's going on here, but we're going to find out. See if we can't figure out a way to make this one work again. So when you're doing your diagnosis on a reel and trying to figure out what your uh, issues may be, you want to do a couple of tests before you just start ripping the reel apart. Now, of course, if you own the reel and you've been fishing it, you know at what point something went bad and you have a general idea. When you uh, get one in the shop, you really don't get that backstory, so you have to look a little bit. One of the things I noticed here is the, the handle nut has not been tightened down all the way. Well, that's only a problem uh, with the handle nut that is not causing the issue here. When you, uh, what you want to do is go into free spool, see if the spool is turning. Well, this one is turning. So we're going to eliminate anything that might be on the back end. We're going to check to see if that level wind is moving, and it is. So we're going to eliminate things like the pawl getting stuck in that uh, worm gear as a cause. And we're going to uh, pretty much narrow this down right now to something's going on on the gear side plate. So what we will do is we will take this reel apart. We can examine the pieces and parts. We're going to try and see if we can ident identify what's jammed or what may have broken. And uh, well, if it's jammed, we can unclear the, the, uh, the jam. And uh, we can put it back together again, get a going fishing. If something's broken inside, well, we're going to have to order the plate up. So uh, we're going to start, as we always do, by taking off the exterior pieces. And to do that, well, I, uh, I'm going to start with the handle. We know that's loose. And, uh, well, it should have just been tightened down more. I believe this handle nut has got the same dimensions as that pen. Yeah, it does. You can use a pen wrench to take that handle nut off on the diodes. Well, before I go much further, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, if you like the art of reel repair, if you like to see how reels are serviced, like to learn a little bit about the fishing reels, the different types and how they're used, the manufacturers and so on, well, then this is a good channel for you. I welcome you and thank all of the people who have subscribed to my channel. And uh, well, if you do subscribe, use that notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting videos. And, uh, well, you can determine whether it's a reel you want to learn about. So on this uh, star adjuster, there is an inset that's going to lock down the handle. That goes on the top side. Underneath here, there's a cavity with some ridges. That uh, becomes your click alarm for when you're moving that uh, uh, star adjuster in and out. I'm going to remove that. And there's a little washer underneath that. And it's a good place to tell you to take pictures as you disassemble the reel. I get a lot of reels into my shop that, well, people didn't take the pictures. They got a little carried away in trusting their memory. And, well, they just couldn't get the reel back the right way. And maybe that's the case with this one. I, as I mentioned, I just don't know. So when you don't know, you just got to assume that something's broken. But a lot of times it's what, well, let's just call it operator error. Somebody got started on it and uh, couldn't finish it correctly and put something out of place. The best way to, to avoid that, take the pictures as references. That will help you to determine the orientation and the order that you took the pieces and parts off. And when you do that, that's certainly going to be an advantage should you uh, stumble on the reassembly. You can also go out to the internet and get a uh, schematic of the reel. That's a burst diagram. It's a picture and it will tell you the order that the uh, parts are, and it will also give you a convenient parts numbers in case you've got to go ahead and buy something that may be broken. Well, there's one more of these after I remove that. When I take these out, I, I put them all in the same spot on my table. I want to make sure that all the pieces, the screws and the like, are the same before I put them into my parts tray. If there's a long one or a short one, I want to note what position that was, what hole it came out of, so that when I go to reassemble, I put it in the proper place. And I know that sounds uh, kind of like why or odd, but particularly on Daiwa and Shimano reels, for some reason, that occurs. 
All right, with those four screws, we should be able to remove the side plate. I am noticing there's a bearing up top here that may come out. Okay, the uh, side plate is off. That kind of looks the way it should look. Here's your bearing, and then underneath your bearing were the two shim washers. I'll put those into my parts tray. My parts tray is nothing more than a fast food container. I kind of use the corners of each one of those uh, nooks to uh, store the pieces, kind of keep them separate. I like to move these right away. These are the yoke springs. And I want to see what's going on here now. Well, this one's turning, so very unusual here in that whatever it was that was causing that thing to slam up is moving without the tension on the case. So we may uh, look towards the case here. We're going to do a good cleaning. It, it's obvious that there's no greases or oils on this piece. And uh, well, we'll just trust that that cleaning is going to help everything make this real right. I'm going to start by using a penetrating oil as a cleaner and a degreaser. And I'm going to do that on my, my trip lever. Now we know that the trip lever was working. I was able to test the reel to see if, uh, if there was any issues when I moved that spool back and forth. So that's okay. I'm just going to use a cotton swab now. It's your typical baby cotton swab. This one I can actually call a Q-tip because it is a Q-tip. But uh, the Q-tip police would worry if I called something that wasn't Q-tip or Q-tip, I guess. All right, we mop that up. That's nice and clean. We have a plastic bushing on the top for the spool. This is your instant anti-reverse clutch, and uh, it's clean. I'm not noticing any accumulation of greases or oils or anything in there, and that's just the way it should be. It's dry. Okay, I'm going to set that case off to the side. Put that in my parts tray. And now we can disassemble the main gear and the pinion gear and the like, make sure all of that gets clean. This has a backup anti-reverse dog. It's right here. It's going to ride in a channel. And uh, we're going to take that off now. And you want to make sure that as you pull up and out on the gear stack, that you've also removed that anti-reverse dog. This anti-reverse dog has got a fork on it. You might see it They're sometimes called fingers. One side is going to go on each side of the ratchet. This is the ratchet. And I uh, will show you how to reset that right after we get done with the cleaning. This is why taking a picture at a certain place is good because, well, that whole thing just popped off. We have a, a hard washer that goes on top of the uh, sleeve spacer. And all of that goes on to the gear shaft here. I'll set that off to the side for a moment. We'll come back to that in a moment. And uh, I believe that there is a bearing here. and it's, two screws, so let's go ahead and take those screws out and uh, oil the bearing back there as part of the service. That's not causing this thing to fail. Right now I'm just thinking that, uh, well, it's unusual that just plain dried grease or no grease is causing a reel not to turn, but uh, it doesn't hurt to do the whole assembly. Okay, the uh, faceplate came off, the gear shape off. Just testing the bearing now, making sure that it's running. It is. I'm going to use an oil now. I oil bearings. I'm going to give that a good coating of oil. While I have the pieces out, I'm going to pull off the pinion gear and the yoke and the jack. And again, do just what we were doing before, clean. And I'm also doing an inspection while I do this. One of the things that could have happened is we could have had line trapped in here that was causing it. It could also be line trapped on the other side. We haven't got there yet. But uh, you want to eliminate what you can, test for what you can to make sure that uh, you eliminate any suspects, particularly since we didn't see anything unusual here. My first thought was that this pinion gear was going to be uh, seized onto the spool. That's not the case. And uh, well, again, you just want to take as much caution as you can when you do this, and you want to inspect everything. All right, this plate is clear. If you were uh, wondering how it goes, well, you should have taken a picture. All right, we're going to take the gear sleeve, put that back. You start by getting the 
gear shaft locked in on the bearing. There's a little pin that's going to hold it here, and that's the source of the two screws which I left on my desk. Generally speaking, I would have liked to have put those screws into my parts tray so that they don't get lost. They're very small pieces of parts. However, I knew that it was coming right out and going right back on. Not an excuse, but I did leave them there kind of to get a little bit lazy with it, I guess. Okay, you're noticing that there's two small washers here. Those small washers are going to be associated with the yoke. That's going to keep the yoke springs from getting stuck inside the, uh, the lever here, the yoke. Examine your pinion gear. This one looks clean and grease-free. I'm going to take a hard brush and I'm going to pull through the teeth on this right now. I want to pull any old creases that may be in there out. Again, I'm not seeing it, so that's probably more to illustrate how to do this than it is. I want to check the slot on the pinion gear. Again, if this was sticking, that would be a cause for the issue. And when you go to reinstall this now, the slot faces inwards because that shoulder uh, or slot is going to mesh up with the shoulder on the spool. And that's what's going to enable that to turn. I'm going to use a little bit of grease onto the collar here. And I'm going to insert the pinion gear. I'm going to grease that up as best I can. And if you knock the yoke off, not a problem. Grab that yoke again, put that in. And that goes and nests on the two posts. Before I can put those posts in, I want to clean the jack. Examine it. There's nothing at issue here. Those pop-outs belong there. They face out. A little bit of grease onto the back side. A little bit where it's going to slide in the channels. I'm using pen precision wheel grease for this. I really don't care which fishing wheel grease you use, but I do care that you use a fishing wheel grease. All right, we'll take our yoke assembly now and we'll put that in. I'm going to turn the pinion gear to bring it down as low as I can. Then these two springs, covers or washers, go in under where the spring is going to be, just like that. Before we put those springs on, we want to address the main gear. That's what came off here. And we'll start with this click ratchet. Once you have located your uh, anti-reverse dog, notice that there's two fingers. One's going to go on each side of the ratchet. Notice that the ratchet has a square on it. So just work it in so that it separates the two fingers and it seats like that. That's how this is going to go together. The beak of your anti-reverse dog is going to fit into these slots to stop the, the reel. Once you do that, then center it over this piece. Make sure that your anti-reverse dog goes onto the stud in the case and that the square is mounted flush and even, not off-centered, with the post below. Here's your gear stack then. You want to take your drag washers out to inspect them. These are Carbon Tex drag washers. You have the option with these to either uh, grease them or leave them as is. And uh, for me, we're going to leave these as it is, I think. I want to do the same thing with the main gear that I did with the pinion gear. I want to use a hard brush to pull through on that. Still haven't quite figured out why the reel was not uh, operating. So one of the theories that I have here is that that anti-reverse dog may have gotten jammed. That's unusual. But again, an anti-reverse dog would stop a, stop a reel. That's for sure. Now normally it would stop it in its tracks going backwards, but if it became detached, it could have caused an issue there. Alright, we greased up the main gear. That goes over next. Make sure that it sits firmly with the mesh of that pinion gear. And now we've got a series of three washers here. We have a 
In Russian, it has a circle in the center and two studs. That's your eared washer. We have one that's got the rectangle that fits over the shaft like this. Easier said than done some days. And we have one that's got a little protrusion on it. That's the top washer. It's a little bit thicker. Looks like the one that we just put in, but a little bit thicker. On these tabs, I face them down. Third washer. And then find the one that's got the raised piece of it that faces up. Then we have our sleeve spacer. And there was a washer that went on top of that, which is the back end of the, uh, the assembly from this side. Okay, that's the inner side of your case. Okay, once you've mounted everything, pull up on your, your jack. You want to make sure that uh, the stud is up. When you go to mount your case, you want to move the stud up here, because that's where you're going to be able to merge it high and high. I've got the four screws out of my box. Last thing I need to do before we put that cover on is to put those two yoke springs on. Now one of these jumped out when I opened up the case, so I'm not sure it's possible because I didn't have a view inside. It is possible that one of these got off and got jammed in a mechanism. Not sure. Uh, you'll never know, but uh, it's always good to speculate. Take your case now, line up your case screw holes, bring it in, and you'll notice there's a gap. You usually have to move your free spool lever just a little bit, like I did there. You'll see that the, that enabled the stud to go into the hole of the jack. We've got a nice tight case, and we noticed when we took these out that all four screws are the same, so they can go in any slot. Well, while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to ask questions. Maybe you want to know a little bit more about this reel. Maybe you want to learn a little bit more about the manufacturer. Maybe you're working on a reel that has nothing to do with this. You just came across my video and uh, you need help on that reel that you're working on. I'll leave that in the same comment section here. If I can help you, I will. I get all kinds of questions on all kinds of reels. I've worked on an awful lot of them over 25 years. And, uh, well, if I can help you out, I'm certainly willing to do that. That's the whole idea behind Second Chance Tackle. It's to give you reels a second chance, but more importantly, teach you how to do it yourself so that you can keep your tackle maintained and uh, ready to go fishing. So nobody wants to lose the fish of a lifetime to a poorly performing reel, myself included. And uh, if I can help you to do that, then, uh, well, that's kind of what the purpose of this channel is. All right, there's two more to go. One and a half now, I guess. I get asked a lot about using mechanical screwdrivers to, to set these screws. I'm not a big fan. Those mechanical screwdrivers have a lot of torque and uh, can crack cases. They can break off screw heads. They can do all kinds of things. So I would encourage you to uh, avoid those. I understand if you got hands that uh, need an assist, go ahead and use them, but don't finish the screws. Put them in three quarters of the way and then use your hands to finish the, the tightening. Okay, they should all be tightened down now. Got a couple more pieces here. We have those two um, concave washers. They're the ones with the bows in it. I like to take the first bow and face it up. Take the second bow and face it down. Then we got the bearing. I did not oil this bearing previously, so we'll go ahead and do that. Seat the bearing in there. Then we had that washer and the click mechanism. They're separate. Washer is kind of a water seal. And we have the click washer, which is going to tell us when you're moving your star adjuster to adjust the drag. Go ahead and put that uh, star adjuster on right now. These are called star drag wheels because of the, the adjuster. And that star drag was made over 100 years ago. It was patented, I believe, by uh, Julius, could have been Edward, uh, von Hoff. And uh, became very popular and became the way to go for the longest time. When you get down to here, you're going to notice that that little 
uh, peak sticks out, just use a screwdriver or something to push it in and under the lip before you continue. You don't want to trap that in there. And you can hold your stem and you'll hear the click going now. We'll go ahead now and put the spacer in there. Grab the handle. This time around, use the handle as a wrench to tighten your, tighten your drag down further. Tighten your handle nut. Give it a quick test. I'm not sure if we've solved anything because I haven't seen anything that says that that was a problem. But uh, one never knows. Sometimes it's just that you, you work on these things and sometimes they clear up, sometimes they don't. That's tight. Let's put the lock nut back in. Put the lock nut back in, you want to make sure that the scallop on the nut is in the right position to accept the head of it. And let's see what's going on now. Well, we're stuck, so we haven't solved the issue yet. Which, because we know the side plate is good, and when we go into free spool, we know the spool is turning. It, it brings us down to either the paw, which we've seen move, or something going on on this side. So let's go back to this side now and see if we can identify an issue that's stopping it here. And usually if it's an issue that's stopping it on this side, it's usually broken line. Let's see. Broken line or a broken drive gear or something like that. We don't have a broken line testing our gears. Let's take the spool out first. Let's turn the reel. Oh, it's still not turning. That's very unusual. All right, we're going to take this off again and uh, we're going to see if we can further identify this. First thing to do is to take the case off without removing the other pieces. I'll pause it for a moment to remove that case. Okay, so rechecking my work, I think this is the culprit. I think whoever had this reel apart put this in the wrong spot. Remember we saw this under the click ratchet on the uh, gear stack. And that, uh, that just doesn't seem right. So I think what we'll do, I believe that belongs under the main gear. I just checked for a schematic. It says it belongs here. I was curious why it didn't. And so here's what's happening. When you don't have that spacer washer there, it's trapping under the main gear. So that's probably why this thing is kind of hung up. Let's see. Probably just as simple as that. So I'm we'll, uh, going to go ahead and reassemble again. Then it's not that big a deal. It is rework. That's always a shame. But, uh, you know, sometimes you learn. This one, I think, is going to be a combination we're going to call operator error. Somebody was in this reel and, uh, well, this is some, during the reassembly of the reel, they did not assemble it properly. Okay, let's see if we can bring this back down again. Make sure your case is sealed. I'm going to go ahead and put those screws back in. Here's probably where I wish I had one of those mechanical drives. Because after doing this a couple of times, your hands do get tired. Well, you've seen me do this already, so we're going to pause the camera here. We'll come back with this side plate reassembled. Okay, to catch up to speed, I've put the side plate on. I've reattached the screws. We're over here on the non-gear side. I've just cleaned off the spool tip, oiled the idler gear. Put a little bit of grease into the bushing on the back side of this. I've got two more screws to do here. Attach a handle. I'm confident this time around we got it. So sometimes 
the lessons learned on these are to, uh, well, start with the schematic. I thought I knew this reel. I thought it was unusual. You heard me in the early comments about that one being there. Uh, not thinking twice about it, though. And, uh, well, I probably should have thought right then and there to stop, go get the schematic, check it out. And, uh, well, sure enough, I went to look at the schematic. It doesn't belong there. And I have all the confidence in the world that this reel is going to do exactly what it should be doing now. How do I do? How do I know that? Well, look at the spacing difference here on the handle. There's a lot of spacing there without that uh, star drag even being fully tightened down. It just wasn't there before. So I think what was happening with that, uh, that washer, it got trapped inside the case, and that was what was putting the, uh, the tension on it. You probably run that washer without, uh, or that main gear without that washer, but you can't run it with that washer in the space that it was in. All right, hand tighten the, the handle nut. And I think that's another indication that, that somebody was inside the reel. This handle nut was very loose. If it was, or if it was a never serviced reel from the factory, well, at least this would be tamped down, and it wasn't. Well, lessons learned. Okay. I see it's turning. I just uh, rotated it, and the reel turned. Well, that's always good and encouraging. At least I don't have to do it for a third time now, trying to figure out what's going on. All I need to do now is assemble this set screw into the cap. Tighten this down, give it a test. Also, while I was off camera, I did oil the level wind. I did test it. That level wind was working just fine. Thank you very much. That was not the issue. I did that with the spool out. You can turn your level wind gear and uh, get that. All right, so let's try this again. Let's go into free spool. Oh, we got a nicely turning reel here. Let's tighten down our drag adjuster. See all the space in there now that was missing? That's quite a bit of space that wasn't there before. All right, we got a good turn there. Crank the reel, look at this. Flies nice and easy. Is there any question? So this one, the mechanics were fine in it. There were no broken parts. There was an odd reaction there as we, uh, as we saw in that the reel was stuck, and it was stuck on the drive side, and well, it happened to be that a piece and a part was out of place. Well, just goes to show you, everybody can get fooled once in a while. Fool me once, shame on me, right? Fool me twice, well, you know the story there. Or shame on you, I guess. Shame on me the second time, right? This one's ready to go fishing again. All right, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've learned as much as I have from this reel. And uh, again, I hope you subscribe if you like these types of videos and want to see more. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are appreciated. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, wishing everybody great fishing. Have a nice day.